So the first six chapters mainly focus on karma yoga, the second six chapters are more on bhakti yoga, and the final section is on jnana yoga. So sometimes people think that because the jnana yoga comes at the end, that there must be more important than the bhakti yoga. But Srila Prabhupada explains, he said, no, the, the good thing is in the middle. And the first six and the last six chapters are protecting the main feature of the Bhagavad Gita. So in the first six chapters, the first, no, the, first, the very first verse of the Bhagavad Gita begins with Dhritarashtra expressing his own attachment to his family members and how he want, how he is not feeling the same affection for the sons of Pandu, who are his own, who are also his family members. So then the chapter goes on to reveal Arjuna's doubts that he feels that it's not not proper to take part in this battle of and he has different reasons, such as compassion, and he's worried about sinful reactions, and he's concerned also about the, the future of the dynasty. So Arjuna reveals his doubts to Lord Krishna, but at the same time he goes on to reveal his intelligence by taking shelter of Lord Krishna. And that he confessed his own weakness due to family affection and his, uh, how he was confused about the religious duties. But then he also turned to Krishna and asked Lord Krishna to accept him as his, as his student and to instruct him. So Bhagavad Gita has become known all over the world and people often like to quote different slokas from the Bhagavad Gita and they will bring up different analogies and examples which are taken from Bhagavad Gita. There was one lady, she was uh, propagating her own philosophy and she told her disciples, just as 
Lord Krishna told Arjuna to surrender to him, so you should surrender to me. <laughs> And then there was another lady also who came up with the idea that she said Krishna told her the Bhagavad Gita is too old and she should write the new Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> And both of these people have been many followers. And of course, we can question where they're following to, where they're going, what is the destination that is uh, to be discussed. Anyway, Bhagavad Gita is universal knowledge. It's, uh, we could translate it in English simply as the Song of God. And it's, uh, it's I, I first of all came across the Bhagavad Gita when I was a student at university and they had a humanities course and one of the, one of the options was the Bhagavad Gita. But it was taught by a Christian, a Christian ministry. <laughs> so, of course, we were not using Prabhupada's part of it. And so I, I really didn't understand anything from the Bhagavad Gita class. And there are so many editions of the Bhagavad Gita, and you can go through them and you, know, you may never understand anything. <laughs> But still, for hundreds and th maybe thousands of years, people are fond of reciting the Bhagavad Gita, just as we were doing today. It's been a custom for people who, when they grow up, they, as young children, they, they will learn to recite the slokas of the Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> It is said that Bhak Srila Bhakti Thakur trained his son Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati in reciting the Bhagavad Gita. And while he was still a young boy, he could recite the whole Bhagavad Gita and he could explain the slokas also. So the first section of the Bhagavad Gita, uh, as I said, focuses more on Karma Yoga, but there's also a, a clear progression in the teachings of yoga in these first six chapters. Lord Krishna has to counter the arguments of Arjuna why he didn't want to fight. And Lord Krishna does that very effectively. <laughs> Just like one of Arjuna's reasons why he didn't want to take part in the battle, he thought it's not compassionate. But Lord, Lord Krishna went on to explain the difference between the body and the soul and show that actually there's no question of compassion. 
Because the body is going to die one day anyway. If Arjuna doesn't take part in the battle, all these people are going to die anyway. Lord Krishna convinces Arjuna of that. Another reason why Arjuna didn't want to fight was he was worried about sinful reactions. But Lord Krishna explained the principles of karma yoga and that if Arjuna fought, if he did his duty as a Kshatriya, as karma yoga, then there's no reactions for that participation in the battle. Arjuna didn't want to take part in the battle because he was worried about the degradation of the dynasty, that there would be unwanted progeny and the women would be corrupted and the result of the corruption would be unwanted progeny and Arjuna said, then that was one reason why he didn't want to fight. But Lord Krishna explains to Arjuna that if you, if you don't fight, then that will be the cause of unwanted progeny. But if you do fight, you show the right example. That it, the example is more important. But if you don't fight, you're showing a bad example. And that bad example will be the cause of the unwanted project. <laughs> So in the first six chapters, as I said, there's a progression of yoga. First of all, Lord Krishna touches lightly on something which is not even yoga, which is called karma, the path of further karma. Lord Krishna is explaining karma yoga through nations and and he's telling Arjuna, you have a right to perform your duty, your adhikar, your qualification is to work. So Lord Krishna is encouraging Arjuna to work. And people like that, they think, yeah, Krishna, told, Krishna tells us in the Bhagavad Gita that we should work. People like to work, but they don't remember the next part of the verse, which says, you are you are not entitled to enjoy the fruit of your work. Never consider yourself to be the cause of the results. Usually we think, you know, I did it, you get some good result, you make some money, you do well in something. You think, I did it, you feel good about yourself. But Lord Krishna says, you're not the cause. It, it, what happened, the results are due to karma. Mm. 
，你并不是这些活动的指导原因，这些呢是由你的卡玛力报导致的。And then Lord Krishna concludes the verse by saying, "Never be attached to not doing your duty." So in this way, Lord Krishna is describing the principle of karma yoga. No. Karma yoga, as I say, can be impersonalist. The impersonalist can, people just simply detach from the result. They don't know Krishna. There's no connection with the Supreme Lord. So, 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 so,
some did maybe doing karma yoga and then you can come to jnana yoga by receiving transcendental knowledge. So somebody is working in a detached manner. They, they get benefit. They don't know anything, but even though they don't know anything, they get some benefit. But if they know, if they have transcendental knowledge, they understand what they're doing, they'll get more benefit. So and just like even if we give people beats and tell them to chant Hare Krishna. So somebody may be chanting, they don't know anything. Who is Krishna? I don't know. They just told me to chant. No, no, no benefit, of course, because they're chanting. But if somebody knows who is Krishna, and something about Krishna's qualities and so then they will get more benefit. So, Jnana Yoga uh, gives one that knowledge to understand his spiritual nature. And then he will think that I'm, I'm not the body, I should detach myself from the material world. And the next level of yoga after jnana yoga is dhyana yoga, which is described in chapter 6 of the Bhagavad Gita, where Lord Krishna introduces Asanga yoga. So Sangha Yoga, the, the, the yogi learns to meditate on the self within the body. He's meditating on the Paramatma. And again, there is a danger that one can think that I am the Paramatma. There are two schools of philosophy in yoga. One school, they will consider that there's only the super soul. And the other school, they will understand that there are two souls. There is the Jeev Atma and the Paramatma. No, first of all, they understand that there, there's only the super soul. So they think they're meditating, they're meditating on the self, the super soul. And they ultimately they want to then give up the body and enter into the oneness. They give up the body and enter into the impersonal light of the Brahma Jyoti. So the Astanga Yoga comes after the Jnana Yoga comes that you come to the meditation, but if the yogi properly meditates, he understands there is two souls, one is the master and he is the servant, then he will want to engage in devotional service. 
，他就会嗯，就他会觉悟到，超人是主人，而他自己就是仆人。So in this way, the sixth chapter concludes with Lord Krishna explaining that of all yogis, the highest yogi is the one who is always absorbed in thinking of me and engaged in my transcendental loving service. So in the fourth chapter, the last sentence, Krishna says, "In all yogis, the one who is always absorbed in thinking of me and engaged in my transcendental loving service." So in this way, Lord Krishna concludes the description of the yoga ladder. He's told that bhakti is at the top of the yoga ladder. So the next chapter, chapter seven, goes on to explain bhakti yoga. 于是呢，这样子，呼吸呢，他就结束了嗯前六章嗯的对瑜伽的探讨。之后就结论就是奉爱瑜伽是最高的。And the very first verse of the seventh chapter introduces us to the process of bhakti yoga, specifically by hearing about Krishna. 于是从第七章开始，主护士呢就描述了巴提尤伊格尔奉爱瑜伽的程序，尤其是从聆听开始。Hmm. Chapter seven, verse number one. Lord Krishna says to Arjuna. Now hear, O Arjuna, how by practicing yoga with your mind attached to me, you can know me in full, free from doubt. 在国家动作第七章第一个诗节，就是来对阿尊说：“阿尊呐，你你你聆听，你仔细的聆听，这样你就能摆脱呃一切疑惑。” So. Lord Krishna introduces bhakti yoga that when one should hear about Krishna, this is shravanam. The very first of the nine angas of bhakti is to hear about Krishna. So, to Krishna, to in this world, he emphasized shravanam, to hear. I have found the bhakti yoga, the ninth angas of bhakti yoga, the first angas of bhakti yoga, the first angas of bhakti yoga, the first angas of bhakti yoga. And so, in the seventh chapter, Lord Krishna goes on to reveal more about himself, explaining about how. Well, one of the statements in the seventh chapter, Lord Krishna said, "There is no truth superior to him. Everything rests on him, just like pearls are strung on a thread." 在第七章当中，主护士呢揭示了有关更他比他呃更高的知识。他说：“嗯，万我是一切的，嗯，呃，万事万物都依呃依依依赖我而存在，就如线串珠，就像线穿着珍珠。” No other authority ever says that they are the highest truth. Only Lord Krishna directly is. Says this to Arjuna and to the world. To Krishna, say, no one has more truth than me. So, only Krishna, he, 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 And the three subtle elements of the mind, intelligence, and ego—that it is, this is all his inferior, separated energy. The Buddha 呢还描述了他呃与他分离的这些物理元素，如五大粗糙元素、土、水、火、空、气、碳，以及心地之前假我和三种精微的元素。And then Lord Krishna explains the position of the living entity. That he said there is another energy of mind, O Arjuna, which are all living entities. To push that, he also explains the position of the living entity. He says, Arjuna, ah, there is, besides that, there is another higher energy, which is all living entities. So, living and we living entities, we are also the energy of Krishna, but we are superior energy. So, we are also the energy of Krishna, but we are superior to all matter. Because we have consciousness. So we are the body, also is Krishna's energy. But we are above the energy. 
因为我们比那些迟钝的物质有更高的知觉。And then Lord Krishna goes on to explain how there are four classes of people who will never sit down to drink. That is the the duskritina mudha, the person who is like a donkey who simply works to enjoy the fruit of his work. 第一类就是那些愚蠢的像驴子一样的人。And then there are nine dhammas, the lowest of people. It means people who were born with an opportunity to take up spiritual life, who had a good birth, but who don't take advantage of it and simply waste their time in material sense gratification. 那还有拿尔达玛，就这些人，他们出生，他们有很好的出生机会。And then Maya Aparita Jnana means one whose knowledge is stolen by illusion. People want these people; they try to understand the scriptures by the power of their own intelligence, not listening to the words of the authorities. Maya, and then the next one is wisdom. 被假象窃取的人们，他们想要，他不听从高等权威，而是想靠自己的努力来去理解这个知识。And then in this case also the just um na propaganda na those who are atheistic and who are offensive that they are the fourth class of people and that they see. So they are asuram bhama shita. In this way, Lord Krishna describes four kinds of people who never surrender, and then he will then he explains four kinds of people who do surrender. 他解释完，呃，有四类不成熟的人之后，他又，就同时呢，又阐释了四类人不成熟的。First of all, there are people who are mostly in distress. They will come to Krishna consciousness to take shelter of Lord Krishna from the material energy. 第一类是苦恼者。嗯，他们会来到 Krishna 这里求取庇护，想要摆摆脱物质的苦恼。And then there are the people who are in search of some material wealth, and they may come to Krishna consciousness. They may somehow think that if I go to Krishna, He will satisfy my material needs. 还有求财者，这些人想着，我到 Krishna 那里呢，也许 Krishna 会满足我的物质的需求。Some people come to Krishna consciousness simply out of curiosity. They just simply want to understand what is taking place, and the fourth category, people come in search of knowledge. And the fourth category is curiosity. They want to know what is happening in the world. These four types of people are called the seekers of knowledge. In this way, Lord Krishna describes four kinds of people who are all who all have sukriti. The four people who don't surrender, they're duskritinas. They have no pious activities. But those who come to Krishna, they have some sukriti, which brings them to Krishna. Although they have some material desires, they have pious, some piety, which has brought them to Krishna. So, those who are not And Krishna then says, from these four, the best is the one who is in knowledge of me. So Krishna says, in these four, the best is the one who is in knowledge of me. So Krishna says, in these four, the best is the one who is in knowledge of me. And somebody is in distress. After the distress is over, they may go away again from Krishna. 有些人在他们的苦恼、苦恼，他们在苦恼当中，当他们的烦恼消失之后，他们自己也消失了
When somebody comes for some material needs, they may get their material needs and then they give up Krishna consciousness. And someone may be curious for some time, but after some time they're not curious anymore, we don't see them again. But if they get knowledge, then that knowledge will be with them and they will never forget Krishna. So the best, most important thing when people come to Krishna consciousness, we want everyone to get some knowledge to understand something about Krishna consciousness. We can come and sit in the class and hear, try to hear. People, oh no, just let me chant Hare Krishna. But it's important to hear and get this knowledge because that will help you to remember Krishna for the rest of your life. And so we may think, well, process is knowledge, I have to get knowledge. And, but Lord Krishna then explains that simply by knowledge you advance very slowly. It takes many lifetimes. After many births and deaths, one who is actually in knowledge surrenders to me. So people sometimes ask us, what is the goal of knowledge? Now Lord Krishna is describing to us in the Bhagavad Gita that the goal of knowledge is to surrender to Vasudev Krishna. So we encourage people surrender to Krishna rather than just only cultivating knowledge. If you can surrender yourself to Krishna, then that is very good. So Bhagavad Gita then goes on, we come to chapter 8, Lord Krishna, uh, chapter 8 is just a continuation of chapter 7, chapter 8 attaining the Supreme, Lord Krishna is describing the destination of the living entity will depend on what this consciousness is like at the time of death. Whatever state you have, whatever state of consciousness we have at the end of the life, that will take us into the next body. But if we can remember Krishna, then we can go to be with Lord Krishna. And then we come to chapter 9, which is described as the most confidential knowledge, or the Raja Vidya. And the, the, the final verse of the ninth chapter, which is right in the middle of the Bhagavad Gita, so it's like the heart of the Bhagavad Gita, describes four very important activities which the devotees meant to engage in. 
整个国家办歌当中是处在最中心的地位，那就好比这心脏一样。他讲到一个奉献者，他要做的四件事。Right. Engage your mind in worship. Engage your mind in thinking of me. Become my devotee. Worship me with love and offer obeisances to me. In this way, surely you will come to me. 心意常常想着我，崇拜我，顶拜我，必必会到达这里。So this is the most confidential knowledge. This kind of knowledge is not taught to people without the help of the part of it. 所以，所以这就是最，嗯，被称为是最机密的知识。如果没有国家的翻译的帮助，是没办法了解这些知识的。But the real test of the Bhagavad Gita is how much we become a devotee of Krishna. So many Bhagavad Gitas were there, but no devotees. 嗯，但国家翻译它真正的考验是。看多少人真正成为了奉献者，因为有那么多的人在唱歌，但是奉献者却寥寥无几。And it wasn't until Shri Prabhupada wrote his Bhagavad Gita that people started be, to become devotees. 直到帕布哈德撰写了《国家唱歌》原语之后呢，才有这么多人，嗯、呃，奉献者涌现出来。They would read the Bhagavad Gita. Devotees would distribute to them. They would read it, and they would read. Oh, I need a spiritual master. I need a guru. And they would come and want. What, can you help me find a guru? I want to get a guru. People want to be guided. 当人们读了《国家唱歌》之后，他们意识到啊，我是需要公路的。于是他们询问奉献者，我到哪里能够找到一位能够指导我的公路呢？ So everyone else was writing their Bhagavad Gita, but they were just simply putting their own nonsense philosophy and their own speculations in the Bhagavad Gita. 有那么多人为国家唱歌嗯做评注，但是他们只是把自己的荒谬的嗯哲学嗯放在里面。But it was Sri Prabhupada who opened the door, who opened the eyes of the world. To understand what is the real message of Bhagavad Gita. This is Saint Bhagavad Gita. He opened the door. He opened the eyes of the world. 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 He opened the eyes of the 在马来西亚，当然在印度也是，我们教我们教人们迪卡迪亚，有关于呃国家放歌成千上万的人，如果这个得得到国家放歌知识。So after the most confidential knowledge, then、uh, the tenth chapter you have the chapter sloki of the Bhagavad Gita, the four essential verses verses of the Bhagavad Gita. 接下来到第十章，就有插图使用法，就国家放歌的四个主题细节。And Arjuna then had a question to Lord Krishna. He wanted to know how can I think of you in the ordinary course of the day, in the when I when I'm simply engaged in the activities of the world, how can I remember you? And that led to Lord Krishna speaking tenth chapter. 阿朱呢，就向呃呃，不是呢，提出了询问说：“当我从事世俗的活动，我怎能不常的记忆你？”这样就来到了《菩萨行者》第十章。嗯。And Lord Krishna described more than eighty different ways in which we could see Lord Krishna in this phenomenal world. For example, of flowing rivers, the Lord said, "I am the Ganges." 就不，嗯，库什纳在第十章当中呢，他就列举了八十个例子，如何在这个物质的现象世界，透过这些现象来看到他。比如说，他说在河流当中我是恒河。He says, I am the syllable Om in the Vedic mantras. 我是伟大梦词当中的 Om， 音节 Om。I am the sound in ether. I am ability in man. I am the light of the sun and the moon. Of beasts, I am the lion. In beasts, I am the lion. Among men, I am the monarch. 
And so many different examples are given by Lord Krishna, and then at the end of the chapter, Lord Krishna says, "But Arjuna, there's no need of all this detail of knowledge." So Krishna, in giving all these examples, he says, "Arjuna, you know all these details. What is the use of the details? He said, 'But the single fragment of myself, I pervade and support the entire creation.'" So that single fragment, which is pervading the entire, that is the paramatma, the super soul, which is just a tiny fragment of the supreme personality of God, that Sri Krishna. This one little fragment is the Chaurmu, is the Chaurmu, it pervades the entire creation and pervades the whole creation. So Lord Krishna had described his vibhutis. This tenth chapter is called vibhuti yoga. Vibhuti is the opulences of Krishna. But then, our eleventh chapter, Arjuna requests Lord Krishna. He said, "I want to see your opulences. I want to see that form of yours." 第十章，他是标题是为物质优的，嗯，他嗯就是质朴，可是呢的富裕。但到了第十一章，阿朱呢就进一步提出要求说，不想了，我想见，我想见到你的宇宙形象。And that leads to Lord Krishna showing Arjuna his Vishwarup, the universal form, or you can、uh, he also showed the Kala Rup, his form of time. 这就导致了 Krishna。When Arjuna saw all this, saw the this universal form, it was not pleasing to Arjuna, and he requested Lord Krishna kindly show me your forearm form. When Arjuna. 他向布什纳提出请求，请向我展示你的四肢形状。And Lord Krishna then showed Arjuna his forearm form, but then Arjuna requested Lord Krishna kindly just show me your original form, your two arm form. That is the most pleasing. 在展示了四臂形状之后呢，尔中呢进一步提出请求说，请向我展示您的最原初的两臂形状。And then we come to chapter twelve, where Arjuna wants to understand which way should I think of you? Should I think of you as the all-pervading, or should I think of you as that supreme individual personality? 接下来就到了第十二章，尔中呢就问了布什纳，我应该以什么何种形体来想着你？是以以变化万有的这个形象，还是以以作为呃独立的人格所形的形象想着你吗 ？And Lord Krishna said, those who are attached to that impersonal feature, for them advancement is very trouble. 就不想说，对于那些依附于非人格呃非人格特征的，他们的进步非常困难重重。It's always difficult for them to defend. So Lord Krishna established that the one who is a devotee, who is remembering Krishna in his original transcendental form, he is the best of all people. So Krishna also clearly said that the one who is a devotee, who is remembering Krishna in his original transcendental form, he is the best of all people. So maybe we should. Is there any question? Any question? Rajendra. You are. Ah, ah, Jun, at the beginning, he didn't want to do it. After the Buddha passed away, he decided to do it. 但是作战的时候，他用他的剑射向老祖父比什
色拉以后，为什么躺在病床上？他看起来也特别的悲伤，啊，耳朵呢也在哭泣，所以人们就会问：耳朵呢听了国家抗议，他射倒了啊，为什么之后还那么悲伤？有人会质疑，听了国家防疫以后和内和内听好像没什么区别，是不是听了国家防疫以后，我们不应该那么太悲伤？嗯，嗯，一个呃，一个比比啊，这个这个老很帅，呃，他的医生以后到了这个嗯，体发以后，嗯，医生啊，我呃，来人啊。Yeah, uh, 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 somebody asked Sri Lankapad about, you know, when Abhimanyu was killed in the battle of Kurukshetra, didn't didn't Arjuna lament? That his son was killed in the battle. Of you know, why would he lament? You know, he had the Bhagavad Gita that were not the body, and the wise don't lament for the living or the dead. So why did Arjuna lament? So come. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, there are people who ask him this question. So when Abhimanyu was was shot after the battle, Arjuna why did he lament? So there are people who ask him this question. 既然老师那听了整部的国家放送，明白了具体的人生的区别，为什么他又为阿弥曼诺的死而感到这么的痛苦？那时候，苏格拉底的回答是：“是，对，他的悲哀在那里，但他没有停止打架。第二天，他回来，他杀了那个巨大的巨人，他是负责死亡的阿弥曼诺。他把他杀了，他确保他得到报复。所以，他。” He didn't give up the shakti amrut. So lamentation is there; that is natural. But at the same time, he controlled his mind with knowledge. Come, he replied, "Yes, Arjuna. He is very sorry, but on the next day, he continued to serve as the shakti leader. He killed the giant dragon. He killed the giant dragon. So this kind of sadness and grief are natural. Come, he replied, "Yes, Arjuna. He is very sorry, but on the next day, he continued to serve as the shakti leader." 但是呢，他阿尊呢，他继续已经他做下一个的职责。So, Bhishma was on the bed of arrows, and certainly Arjuna would feel some compassion because it's his grandfather, and he has affection for him. But at the same time, it did not stop him from doing his duty. 所以 Bhishma 老祖父躺在剑床上，因为是他的祖父，他自然而然的他感到悲痛，但是他。并没有因为他的这份呃，这这种家庭的感情而阻止他的职责。啊，对。Yes，my turn。那就是那个，如果你有其他的问题，呃，关于身体的问题，呃，关于身体的问题，呃，关于身体的问题，呃，关于身体的
And one devotee said, just chant Hare Krishna. So, you know, other people were thinking, oh my God, get an ambulance and you know, I have to. You know. But and the devotee said, just chant Hare Krishna. You, know? you, you cannot be so callous and cold hearted. You do have to show some care for others. So 所以有两方面 one time there was a fire in a building in Australia and the devotees somehow they rushed there and they brought sheep and they held up a big sheep and people jumped off the building into the sheep and so the devotees saved the lives of several people and it came in the newspaper how Hare Krishna comes to the rescue and saved the lives of these people from the fire. And Prabhupada said, oh, very good, it's very good publicity. <laughs> So we, we do have to consider public opinions. Otherwise, we will be ruined. But sometimes like we, we think, oh my friend should change her job or she should be living in this place, oh she should break up with, with her boyfriend. How do we know our thoughts? Uh, what what do we think is better for the person? It's actually helping her soul to progress or is there some material of this? Because our mind is very limited. Um, so the first thing is, we tell you, 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 if they're not aware that they're not the body, they're deeply attached to the material body. And, and you're just simply thinking about their soul. And then they won't be very much appreciative of what you try to do to help them. So first of all, you want to make some kind of relationship, some kind of friendship with the person. And when you feel some affection and closeness to you, then you can explain more to them about how you want to benefit them. Uh, 
We don't know. Uh, whether we are getting the correct su suggestion, whether we have the capacity to get in the person on the soul level of the book, uh, it's only what our thoughts. Well, we know from scriptures how to benefit people. Just like the chanting of the holy name is beneficial to all living entities. You want to benefit living entities simply by chanting Hare Krishna. The spiritual sound vibration purifies the atmosphere. Then we also distribute the sound. Of course, not many people appreciate the effect of the chanting of Hare Krishna. You may have neighbors who complain about the noise. Hmm. So we have to consider everything, time, the place, the circumstances. You want to benefit people. We know from scriptures how to benefit people, giving some kind of Krishna consciousness. Maybe in the form of transcendental knowledge, and maybe in the form of mercy. But in the, in the Christian Bible, they say, don't cast your perils before the swine. You know, you have something valuable like perils. You don't want to just throw them in front of the pigs. You want to make sure that they're given to people who know the value of these things. So you want to give people spiritual benefit. You want to try to educate them about how you're trying to get, give them benefit. <laughs> You have to you have to be realistic and understand what you're doing. Who, who is you you want to be the you want to benefit people, you want to make sure they appreciate what you're doing, you want proper receptivity. To your efforts. So when we distribute books, we like to see that we give a book to somebody who can read. We give the book to somebody who can read, what's the book? Well, you could say, well, they just hold the book, they benefit. Yeah, okay, that's true. They do benefit just by touching the book. But if they can read the book, then they can get much more benefit. <laughs> And the books have to be understandable. They have to be written in a manner in which the message is clearly understood. If you print the book, like in Hong Kong sometimes you print the book and the characters are so small, nobody can read them. You know, people will open the book, oh, <laughs> they just throw it away because all the characters are so small, you know, they can't strain their eyes to read it. And so, what's the point of that kind of distribution? You know, you're just simply collecting money. 
，在香港他们印刷的有一些书呢，字体特别小，人们打开书呢，他们都很呃费眼来读这些字体，他们就把它放在一边。所以，嗯，结果呢，印刷这书籍的目的呢，只是去为了嗯，去得到一些捐款而已。Okay. Any other question? In future, the purpose to kill those in class people, but why so many class people are also destroyed? Well, the pious people all got liberation okay? because they're killed in the presence of Krishna. So they got elevated either to the higher planet. They got special mercy. But you say pious. Actually, they were not so pious. They were all called there to be killed because of their sin, because they had offended the great devotee Draupadi. So Lord Krishna took, brought them all there to die. And whether Arjuna killed them or not, they were all going to die because they were they were guilty of offending the great devotee. You say you say they were pious, but they were not so pious. 他们曾经冒犯了这个伟大出现者卓尔比，所以他们都被召唤到战场上，被被杀死，而且他们迟早也会被杀死。And、so we think all pious people, no, actually not so bad. They had some sinful sins to be atoned for, and the atonement was death. They had to die. 嗯，所以有有嗯，有的人说他们是虔诚的，但事实上并不如。并不是，他们犯了罪，而他们应该被死而赎罪。他们被死赎罪的方法就是他们应该被杀死而赎罪。Sri Lanka, Sri 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 Today is a Gita Jayanti special, so we also have a Sita Prabha book marathon. So we are very fortunate to have His Holiness with us. So we like to uh, get a sponsor for those uh, like to sponsor Bhagavad Gita. So we like to call uh, Mulakar Nipur sponsor for Bhagavad Gita. So we like to call and uh, receive from Maharaj. Uh, thank you for your support. You guys want a Maha Apple? Bonus. Bonus. Maha Apple. Thank you. So we have a special, so we have a special 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 Hare Krishna. Anyone? Hello. Chongwen. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So, any devotees like this sponsor? Yaro, ni yaro pagod kita na special group bro. Maybe ni yaro kula. Ni yaro sabi na, ang kita ni na pagod kita yaro kung sabi na para na ni na sasa kana mo siya na sasa kana na ni na sponsor kani matano ko school ko birthday present na. Ede na ako kula ni na. So, ede na ako na kula ni na kula ni gusto ni kamo na ito. Sino kung yaro kung? Anybody like this sponsor? Pagdating. 
Thank you. 